All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are looking at example number two for pure bending in the elastic range. In this case, we are looking at a T-shaped member, a T-shaped prismatic member. So this is the end view of our member, uh, and this would be our side view. And what we're doing is we're applying it uh, some pure bending here, and we have an allowable stress of 150 megapascals. And what we want to do is we want to figure out what's the maximum bending, the maximum internal bending moment that we can uh, that we can develop here without surpassing this. And what that also basically means is that's uh, what's the maximum moment that we can apply in pure bending. And then after that, we want to figure out what is our radius of curvature. So to get started, um, what we really need to do is we need to find the moment of inertia of this T-shape. And we've actually found the moment of inertia of this T-shape in a previous video. If you want to go ahead and click up here, you can find the full, uh, the full 10 minute video about uh, where we went through that. So um, if you haven't seen that already, go check it out. Otherwise, we're just going to work through this pretty quick. So the first thing that we do is we locate the centroids uh, of the individual components, and we're going to label these here. We'll call this section A, and we'll call this section B. And then we want to throw those values into a table where we have the area, the location of the centroid, and the location of the centroid times the area, because we want to plug them into this formula and we'll find that the centroid of the entire composite shape or the T-section is 53 millimeters. And then from there, that's where we set our x-axis and then we'll just calculate the moment of inertia about that axis for the cross-section of the entire composite shape. So we find that the centroidal moment of inertia of the cross-section uh, is uh, 1,511 times 10 to the minus nine meters to the power of four. So this is really the hardest part of the problem and the most time consuming. Um, but where we want to go from here now is we just want to calculate the internal bending moment using this expression where we have uh, sigma max is equal to m c over i. So we're looking for the internal bending moment. So what we want to do is we want to rearrange. So we'll get the internal bending moment is equal to, uh, in this case, sigma max is actually going to be our, the, the max allowable because that's what we're calculating for. Uh, so we have that times the moment of inertia over C. Now we do need to come calculate C, so basically we can just draw on, we're looking for the, the extreme distance or the furthest distance that we can go. So it's either that distance or that distance. And it turns out that C up top here is, uh, is equal to 80 minus 53. So that's uh, 27 millimeters. And uh, C down here on the, uh, this would be the tensile side, uh, where that one is the compressive side in this loading condition, uh, we have, well, that's actually just equal to 53 millimeters. So it looks like the value that we're using here is 53 millimeters. So we have everything that we need. So let's change back to black and let's, uh, let's punch in some numbers here. So for our max allowable stress, we had that up here is 150 megapascals. Um, so that is just 150 times 10 to the 6 newtons per, that's not a very good N, newtons per meter squared. Uh, and then our I value here, moment of inertia, is 1000, that's a 1511 times 10 to the negative 9 meters 4. And then we just divide that all by C, and C was 53 millimeters, so we'll put that as 0 0.053 meters. All right, so we can cancel out some units here. Uh, let's take a look at what we got. We got meters squared, meters four, so we're going to get rid of that and reduce that to meters squared. We got meters down here, so we'll get rid of that, and this becomes units of meters. And when we calculate this, we're actually going to be left with just the units of newton meters, um, which is good because that's what we're expecting our internal bending moment to be. So if you go and just crunch that 150 times 10 to the 6 times 1511 times 10 to the negative 9 divided by 0 0.053, uh, we end up with a number which is 4,276 newton meters, or uh, you know you can round that depending on how how you like to round. Maybe we'll just say that's whatever it's 4.3 kilonewton meters. Okay, cool. So that's the internal bending moment, and that is also the maximum applied um, moment that we can apply here like this in pure bending so that we will be just hitting that allowable stress of 150 megapascals, and that'll actually be occurring down here in the, the extreme tensile fibers, basically. All right, cool. So the last thing that we want to do now is uh, we just want to calculate the radius of curvature when we apply this, uh, this uh, a lot maximum bending moment. 
And we do that using the expression we have 1 over rho is equal to m over ei. All right, so we pretty much know all this stuff. So let's plug in what we know. So for 1 over rho, uh, the moment that we're dealing with here, uh, the, the largest moment that we're allowed to apply is uh, 4,276 newton meters. And this is all over EI. So E was given to us up here. We have 200 gigapascals. Um, so we have 200 times 10 to the 9 uh, pascals is newtons per meter squared. And our I value, well, that's 1511 times 10 to the minus 9 meters to the power of 4. Okay, let's go and cancel units now. So we have newtons up top and newtons down here. We're going to get rid of those. Meters squared, meters 4, so we'll drop that and we'll change that to a 2. We have meters up here and 2 meters down there, so we'll get rid of one of those and be left with a single unit of uh, meters on the denominator down here. All right, so, uh, oh, and here we have uh, 10 to the 9 and uh, 10 to the minus 9. So it's nice that it is intentional the way that I wrote this in these units. We can cancel them out, um, which just makes our lives easier. So 4,276 4, divided by 200, uh, divided by 200 times 1,511. That's going to give us our final value here for 1 over rho. Maybe let's write that. So we have 1 over rho is equal to, when we crunch all that stuff, we get... 0 0.01415, and that meters was down in the bottom, so it's meters to the minus 1. But we're looking for rho, uh, so we'll take the inverse of both sides. So we'll just go like that, and then the inverse of this value here is, uh, is 70.67 meters. So this is the radius of curvature. Uh, of this, uh, once we once we apply this pure bending, we're going to get a circular curvature, and uh, that radius is quite big, and that that's good because the bigger the radius, the smaller the actual uh, deflection that we're going to be getting here in the middle of the beam. Um, so there we go. Uh, this was a bit more of a complicated problem. We spent most of the time uh, calculating the centroidal moment of inertia for the composite shape. And uh, again, if you wanted to catch up on how to do that, check the, the link up there in the top corner and it'll do the, the full non-fast forward version. And yeah, we found the internal bending moment and, uh, and then the radius of curvature. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.